Hello, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we've got some projects we're working on. Uh, we've got the greenhouse going with a fan in there to make sure that we get uh, these plants hardened off. We're going to be having a plant sale soon. Uh, and then I have got something I'm doing in this area right here. It is time to make another raised bed. We're going to try to use some materials that we're going to harvest on the homestead. So stick with us and I'll show you how we get this done. Today's project is going to involve a couple things, some horsepower and some muscle power. So we're going to be cutting up some logs uh, to fit and make the raised bed for this area and then splitting them in half so that we have some flat surfaces to work with. So the first thing we'll be working on is using the chainsaw there to cut the logs to size. We're going to drag them up with the four-wheeler and then we're going to use the splitting wedges and the sledgehammer to split these suckers down. Okay, so here is our quarry for the day. So we've got uh, about some eight inch logs here that had come off a tree that had fallen, fallen over here by the pond. We'd already used some of this log in order to make our last raised bed in the last video. That's what uh, this portion over here that's missing is from. So we're gonna get uh, these cut down uh, about four feet in length on this first one. Uh, the second one there, uh, we'll cut it four feet in length and then uh, cut about an, two eight foot sections out of that. And we'll use this to get a raised bed made. So while I'm back here, I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these logs out of this ditch. Uh, this is one of the county drain line, drain ditches that runs through our property. And uh, I've been kind of neglecting this for a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and drag all this out. Mm. four-wheeler in uh, four low, all will drive low and uh, kind of slowly pull until that rope gets tight. So a few people ask why we didn't get a larger four-wheeler uh, when we were buying the equipment for the property. Well, because this is why. It's got all the power that I need, but it's still a small enough package to where uh, you know I can get it maneuvered around in areas of our property. I mean, this is a pretty large log that we just yanked out of that ditch. All right, let's snatch out the uh, first log here for the raised bed. Or low, nice and slow. Oh, came unhooked. All right, so here is uh, let me turn this. There we go. All right. So this is the uh, the hitch hookup uh, that we went for. Uh, this is a Feral Performance multi hitch here. So we can either attach a ball. Uh, it's got uh, wings here for attaching uh, chains or hooks. And uh, I must not have had this hooked very well. It just popped right out. All right. There we go. Let's try this again.
Now that I've got the logs drug up here in front of the greenhouse, it's time to get them split lengthwise. Uh, I'm going to be using splitting wedges, I've got three of them, and a sledge hammer. Uh, I also have my chainsaw standing by in case I hit any knots that I don't want to split, it's just so I can help coax them along a little bit. So I want to try to find natural splits uh, in the wood. This wood's been out there drying for about three years now, uh, so if I can find some places where it's began to split naturally, it's going to make it easier to get it uh, to split, take just a little bit less effort. particular log did not have the straightest grain. Uh, there's a knot back here and it uh, twisted here on me in the middle. So I didn't get a perfectly uh, centered split here, but it still is going to be usable pieces that we can uh, use somewhere either in this raised bed to divide the beds or uh, in the garden itself. All right, so the second log has a decently natural split. Uh, the middle section here, but there's some knots on this end and some knots on this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that natural split and uh, just help out a little bit on each end with the chainsaw and then I will start with the wedges in the middle. So I've got this log and the chainsawed down to the middle on both sides uh, at an angle and then I've met with the, split, the natural occurring split here in the middle. Let's see if I can get the split. pretty good on this end as you can see see grass on the other end reposition that wedge but as we get to the other end here we really got into some knots some areas where some limbs have been growing out so I'm just gonna take the chainsaw and I'm gonna hit these areas where it's tied together and then I might actually have to go all the way through with the chainsaw on this end as you can see it's splitting off right where I went through with the chainsaw there so we're gonna get the chainsaw out, see if we can get this cleaned up a little bit. Remove the wedge in the area first. You don't wanna hit that wedge with your chainsaw. I've got through that knot here, uh, it's time to get the wedges back in action. Decently split, uh, two pieces of uh, nice maple here, and these will be the end caps for this raised bed. So this is our last log to split for this raised bed. I went ahead and did the same thing, scored the ends where there are some uh, branches, some knots in the wood, uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it split out.
Beautiful. Sometimes they split right how you want them to, despite the knots and twists in the wood. All right. Actually, safe foot log split very nicely. Uh, took a little bit of extra oomph at the end there, but it came apart without too many problems. We'll get this in place. I'll show you the basic layout on the raised bed. And then uh, I guess that'll be it for today. Stick around, let me show you how this is gonna look. So here's the basic shape of the raised bed. Four feet deep, eight feet long. Uh, not 100% sure about this placement yet. Uh, but the next steps are going to be to uh, screw the frame together. Then we're going to dig out about four inches down on this dirt, turn that sod over so it's sod down. Uh, put some, well actually, excuse me, we're gonna pull that sod out about four inches down. Uh, then we will uh, lay in some rotting wood, some leaves, grass clippings, whatever in here, just to give it some, some mass to absorb water and for stuff to break down and provide nutrients. We'll put in uh, about two inches of rabbit manure, uh, another couple inches of uh, compost from the local compost yard, uh, and then we'll put some topsoil on it. And uh, that'll be it. We'll have another nice bed here in order to raise. Now, the great thing about this is because it's a fugal culture bed, as these logs start to break down, we can rebuild the logs on the outside uh, and just turn these in and use these. So we'll expand the bed as we go. Yeah, so, you know, in two or three years, expand the bed, turn these logs under, bury them, and then we'll be able to just continue this process of um, feeding the bed uh, with the rotting wood here. Well, that about does it. I, I hope that this is a uh, been informative or at least entertaining. Thanks so much for joining us and until next time, God bless.